style bus. As of February 1st, 2023, we are required to do this a little bit differently, so I'm going to demonstrate that. The change requires us to do safe start and parking test, parking brake test and service brake test and all that other test at the beginning. Okay, so I get in the bus, I sit down, I turn my key. My gauges reset and my ABS light comes on and goes off. Okay, my bus is in safe start. The brake is set. My gear is in neutral. I'm gonna turn the key. The first one I'm gonna do is my service brake test. I'm gonna shift into drive, release the parking brake, pull forward at about five miles an hour. Make sure you engage the engine. Come to a stop. The steering wheel did not pull to the left or the right. Reset the brake, leave it in drive. Now I'm going to do the tug test. The bus did not move. I revved it to about 12 to 1500, right in between there. My air pressure is still rising. I'm almost to 120. I'll give it a minute here to finish building. If it's too low, you can give it a little bit of a rev to help it along. But it's not too bad. There you go. Air compressor. Air compressor has reached the cutoff of 120. Five. I'm going to turn the key off and back to the right. Okay. To start my CDL brake test, I'm going to release the parking brake. Make sure I'm still in, back in neutral. I'm going to release the parking brake. Once the gauge settles, I will time it for one minute for no more than two PSI loss. Starting now. And you want to watch both gauges, not just one. Back and forth from your watch to the gauge. Make sure that examiner sees your head move, even if it's ever so slightly. They want to see you looking back and forth. They will make you wait up to one minute, but for the purpose of the video, I'm only going to go 30 seconds. Okay, still no movement. All right, that's my 30 seconds. Now I'm going to put pressure on the service brake. Again, once the gauge settles, I'll time it for one minute for no more than three PSI loss. Starting now. Again, video purpose, I'm only gonna wait 30 seconds. Typically, the air gauge will not move until about 45 seconds. That It takes about that length of time for the air pressure to change between the tank and the gauge. Okay, there's my 30 seconds. Now I'm going to pump the brake. My low air warning light and buzzer should come on at or above 60. Then I'm going to continue to pump it and my parking brake should pop between 20 and 40. Make sure to tell the examiner when both of those things happen. If you want to stop when your light and buzzer come on, you can do so. This bus, I pump faster than the gauge moves. Okay, it came on about 70. I'm going to continue to pump and my brake pump, my brake popped just above 30. The gauge still moved when I stopped pumping because my foot was moving faster than the gauge. Okay, that is the end of my brake test, so now I need to sound my horn. That is a new step for the uh, pre-trip in inspection. Okay, that signifies that you are at the end of your brake test and your horn works. I'm gonna start the bus. Okay. I'm going to come over here to my switches. My midship heater gauge switch is working on high and low. You can hear it. The rear heater, it's harder to hear, but it works on high and low. My step well heater works on high and low. My driver defroster and my driver heater defroster works on high. And I'm going to leave that switch on and check my noise switch. The noise switch is working. There is the low setting. My defrost fans on the windshield work on high and low. Come over here 
my flasher light, which is the Amber Student Warning Lights. I'm going to hit that button. My Amber Student Warning Lights come on on the dashboard and over here on the side panel. When I open the door, they change to red here and here, and the stop sign comes out, lights turn red, and the arm comes out. When I close the door, those things cancel. When your light and buzzer go off, you're going, to be more, you're going to hear the buzzer more than you see the light. So you can tell them, my, my lower system, my lower warning system shut off at 80. It's, it's hard to tell on your gauge, so that would probably be about 75 each notch, 15 notch. 15 is, each notch is 15. Over here, I'm going to put on my headlights. My dashboard lights up. I have, a, I'm above three-quarter tank on the DEF. You've got to tell them what the gauge reads. If it's green lights, tell them how many green lights. If, it, if you have a gauge that reads a percentage, tell them the percentage. My water, my water temperature is rising, but not above 220. My oil pressure is between 30 and 50. My speedometer worked on the way here. My volts read between 12 and 14. I know this gauge is reading above 14. It is okay. I have enough fuel for the trip. My air pressure is still building. My windshield is not broken, cracked, has no, has, it's, and has no stickers or obstructions. All seven of my mirrors, one, two, three, four, bottom is five, top is six, student mirror is seven. They are adjusted for me. None of them are broken or missing. My wiper blades are flat to the windshield. They are not ripped or torn. I turn them on, all settings. They work on all settings. And the squirters are squirting. While I was talking, I heard my air compressor reach the cutoff of 125. Okay. I'm going to turn my wheel so when I'm outside, I can see my parts better. Okay. I'm going to shut my headlights off, turn the bus off. This bus has a no child left behind system, so I'm going to go back, do my walk back, and shut that off while I'm walking after I get back there. I'm going to feel the floor with my feet for soft spots. That could be a, a hole. that. If you don't have that system, you can do this a little differently, but this is how I do it for this bus. When I lift my lever, the red lever, could be black on yours, but when you lift the lever, lights and buzzer come on, door opens easily. Close the door, close the lever, lights and buzzer go off. Check your seats. You want to check the back side of the seats on this one. Make sure that they're secured. Get to your roof hatch, turn the lever. Till the, till the lights and buzzer come on. You do not have to open it, but you have to tell them what you would expect and demonstrate how you would do it. Close the lever, lights and buzzer go off. You can check a couple more seats up to your emergency windows. When you get to your emergency windows, lift the lever, open it up, lights and buzzer come on, close it, close the lever, lights and buzzer go off. I would check my other roof hatch and emergency window the same. Your bus may have four emergency windows. That's okay. You would just tell them. I would check the other three windows the same. I'm going to continue up. I'm going to put my gloves on because it's cold. Okay, my road kit right here behind my driver's seat. It has three reflective triangles. I do not have the flares in here because they are not required in Ohio anymore. They are now an option. My body fluid and first aid kits. Are secure the bus they are fully stocked i have my spare fuses either in my first aid kit or my road box my step treads are screwed to the floor there are no trip hazards my five pound abc rated fire extinguisher is fully charged needles in the green and is in place my clear step light Lens is not broken or missing. It is secure to the bus. Now, when I say something is secure, I mean with nuts, bolts, screws, or clamps, and even fittings. My handrails are secure, not broken or missing. My door glass is not broken or missing. My window and door seals are not ripped, torn, or showing signs of leaks. And my door hinges are not bent or twisted. They move easily. I'm going to lift my hood latch. It's not ripped, or, not ripped or broken. I'm going to pull on my mirror bracket. My mirror brackets are not broken or missing. They are secure to the box. I'm going to lift this hood latch. When 
you at the front of my box, I'm going to do my three amber clearance lights, my two amber and two red student warning lights, my two amber turn signal four ways, my two clear headlights with their inside reflectors. All of those are secure the bus, not broken or missing. My reflective tape is not ripped or torn. My crossing arm or safety arm is not broken or missing. It's secure with bolts to its mount. Mount is secured to the bumper. I put the hood up. You can put the hood up from the side if you choose, but I'm right there in the front, so I'm doing the front. Okay. I see no moisture on the top of the engine or fresh puddles of fuel, oil, or coolant underneath. Any of those would indicate a leak. The wires are not bare, broken, or frayed. My hoses reach across. Touch your hoses. Do not count your brake hoses. Those are separate. None of my hoses are bulging or leaking. I'm going to follow my air hoses down to my air compressor. It sits just inside the frame rail there. Follow them down. You can see it here. Okay, follow them in. The air compressor and power steering pump. Typically, they are connected because the oil that runs through one runs through both. Okay. The air compressor and power steering pump are gear driven and secured to the engine. The air compressor is not leaking air or oil. The power steering pump is not leaking oil. Okay. My oil and transmission dipsticks should read between add and full. I would check my oil daily on a cold engine, my transmission fluid weekly on a warm engine. My coolant and power steering fluid are both between add and full. Their caps are tight and I see no leaks. My steering shaft has no more than two inch play. It is not bent or twisted. U-joint is tight. The gearbox is secure to the frame, not cracked or leaking. The pitman arm, drag link, upper and lower steering arms, and tie rod. It sits back here behind that axle. Sometimes it's hard to see. None of those are bent or twisted and they are all secure with castle nuts and cotter pins. The castle nut looks like the top of a rook piece in a chess game or the turret of a castle. There, that's how it gets its name. Okay. The front and rear suspension mount, it's back there. They are not bent or broken or loose. They are secure to the frame. Pick one. Secure to the frame and not broken works. The springs are not cracked, shifted, or missing. Pick one. They are not cracked. They are not missing. They are not shifted. Okay. Two U-bolts. They are secure with two U-bolts and four nuts. The U-bolts are tight and not broken. The upper and lower shock mounts are secure. The shock is not leaking or bent. Here comes your brake hose. Brake hose is not bulging or cut. It is secure. The brake chamber is not cracked or dented. It's not leaking air. The slack adjuster and push rod. Slack adjuster is the bottom part. The push rod is the fork that comes out of the brake chamber. They are secure with a lock, nut, and pin. With the brake set, they should be at about a 90 degree angle. With the brake released, you shouldn't be able to pull the push rod more than one inch, but you will never do it by hand. You need a, you need a special tool to do it. I'm gonna look through the sight hole here on the backing plate. I'm gonna look in there to make sure the brake lining is not worn dangerously thin, and I see no grease or oil. I'm gonna move on to my tires, my inner, and outer sidewalls show no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. My tread depth is wearing evenly, has no less than 4 30 seconds depth, and it is not a recap. The air, the air valve or valve stem is centered on the rim. Metal cap is tight. I do not hear any leaks. I would use a gauge to check the pressure, but I don't have one, so I just visually inspect the tire to see if it's low or flat. The rim has no cracks or illegal welds. All of my lugs, nuts, and bolts are present and tight. I see no rust trails or shiny threads that would indicate looseness. The hub oil seal cap is not leaking. There's no puddle here on the rim or a spray pattern on the wheel. I go around to the other side. The alternator is here and the water pump is down here. It looks like the, uh, like the front of a bullet. There it is, coming to focus. Okay, they are belt driven. The alternator's wires are not worn or frayed. The water pump is not leaking water, coolant, or antifreeze. Any one of those three, because water and coolant, water and antifreeze create coolant. Okay, 
the serpentine belt. Actually touch it. It's not worn or frayed. It has no more than one half to three quarter inch play when pushed on. Okay, over here I would check my front and rear suspension mounts, springs, U-bolts, and shock absorber, the same as I did on the other side. I would check the brake hose, brake drum, slack adjuster, push rod, I'm sorry, brake chamber, not drum, brake hose, brake chamber, slack adjuster, push rod, lining through the peephole, and drum from the outside, the same as on this side as I did the other. I would check the tires and inflation the same on this side as I did the other. I would check the rims, the rim, lugs, nuts, and bolts, this, and hub oil seal cap, the same over here as I did on the other side. Now I'm going to put my hood down. The next change in the pre-trip inspection is, for a school bus, you need to inspect down the passenger side of the bus first. My hood latch is secure. You can do this light either coming in or going out. I've already done the step light, so I'm going to do this one right now. My entrance light. Is secure to the bus, not broken or missing. Open my DEF door. Okay, my DEF tank is secure. It is not leaking. Cap is tight. I don't see your smelly leaks there either. Okay, my amber turn signal four way and my amber, amber front, center, and red rear clearance lights. They are secure to the bus, not broken or missing. My reflective tape, including my amber front, center, and red rear circle reflectors are not ripped or torn. Now we're going to go underneath. The frame, cross members, and floor are not bent or twisted. I see no excessive rust that could be a hole. The exhaust goes from the engine to the tailpipe. It is not bent or twisted. I see no rust or soot that could be a hole, and it is secure with brackets to the frame. The drive shaft is not bent or twisted. It is secure with carrier bearings and brackets to the frame. The U-joint is tight. The U-hangers are in place. Also down here, I'm gonna do my cross check. Now you can do a cross check, you can look across, or you can just stay right here and talk on this side, whichever one you see better. I would check my rear suspension mount. Springs, U-bolts, and shock absorber, the same back here as I did in the front. I would check my brake chambers, brake hose, Slack adjuster and push rod. The slack adjuster and push rod is on the back side of that air chamber. Drum and lining, the same back here as I did in the front. My two tires, I would inspect the same back here as I did in the front, except I have two. There's no debris between the bud wheels and no gap between the rims. The tread depth back here can be no less than 230 seconds. I would check the inflation, the same back here as I did in the front. I would check the rims, lugs, nuts, and bolts, the same back here as I did in the front. I would check the axle seal. It is not leaking and there's no puddle on the rim. Now you can do this next part one of two ways. You can do your airbag and torque rod through here, or you can come back here behind the mud flap and do it with the, with the fuel tank. I'm gonna do it with the fuel tank because I get a better view. The mud flap is not ripped or torn. Secure the bus. When I open the fuel door, fuel cap is tight. I do not see or smell any leaks. Now I'm gonna go down here. If you, I'm going to finish the fuel system. The fuel tank is secure in its cage. The cage is secure to the frame. I do not see or smell any leaks. Now I'm going to look over here. I can see my airbags. They are fully inflated. Not ripped, not leaking. There's a torque rod between the frame rails. It sits diagonal like this or like this between the frame rails. It is secure and not bent. You will not see that unless you get completely under the bus, but you do have to mention it. Okay, back here, I work top down. My three red clearance lights, two amber and two red student warning lights. My two amber turn signal four ways, my four red taillight brake light, and my two clear reverse lights. They are secure to the bus, not broken or missing. Reflective tape is not ripped or torn including my two red circle reflectors. Some buses will have the plastic reflectors. You can include those with your lights, but these reflectors are with the tape. When I lift the door, handle, lights and buzzer come on inside. Hinges and bar are not bent or twisted. Door opens easily and locks in place. No trip hazards. The door and window seals show no signs of leaks, rips, or tears. When I close the handle, Lights and buzzer go off. My windows are not broken or missing. 
over here to this side. I like to stand by the tire because it lets me see everything I gotta mention. I would check my lights, tires, wheels, brakes, suspension, and underneath the same on this side as I did the other. Now I come up to my stop sign. My stop sign is secure to the bracket, bracket is secure to the bus. The four red lenses, two on the out, two on the in, are secure to the sign, not broken or missing. The wire is not broken or frayed or bare. Pick one. Airbag is not cut. Retraction cable is not broken. In my previous video, I said that the airbag was not leaking. It's not gonna leak at this point because there's no air in it, so stick with it, it's not cut. That's it for the outside of the bus. Now we go back to the inside and ask the examiner when you get up here to, um, to help you check the lights. Before you do that, make sure you hot your hood. It's cold, I got ahead of myself, sorry. I'm going to turn my key to the right. You don't have to wait for anything to cycle because you're not starting it up. I'm going to put my headlights on. I'm going to start from the top down. And you can do front and left side on three things, and you'll hear me mention it. My clearance lights, front and left. He, that's okay to do. You want to make sure your window is open so he hears you. So clearance lights, front and left. He'll give a thumbs up or say yes. Okay. Amber student warning lights. Yes. Open the door, they switch to red. So it's red student warning lights, arm and stop sign. Close the door. Right turn signal, yes. Left turn signal, front and left, yes. Four ways, front and left, yes. Turn those off, high beams, low beams. You can do those in any order that you choose. Sometimes I do the high beams first and then I do the turn signals. It just depends on whatever works for you. Then you ask them, will you please go around to the rear of the bus? Because they've already done the side. So again, I start top down. Clearance lights, yes. Amber student warning lights, yes. Open the door, red student lights and stop sign because there are still two red lights on the back of that stop sign that you will not see in this mirror. Yes and yes, close the door. Left turn, right turn. You don't want to have him do the rear and the right because then he's going to have to go to that side of the bus to see it and he, you will not see or hear him. Okay, so just leave it at front and side. Okay, four ways. Yes. I do tail lights first and then brake lights. Yes, yes. Okay, please come back to the door. Open the door. When they get up to the front, clearance lights. Yes. Right turn signal, yes. Four ways, yes. Step light and entrance light, yes and yes. And you can tell him that completes my pre trip. Now, the reason why we test both flash, both the turn signals and the four ways separately is because they are on separate flashers. And if one flasher is broke, the other one will work. So we have to test both flashers. But I hope this video helps you. Good luck to you. Happy busing. <laughs>